Hey YouTube, Vinny M here and welcome to another video here on the channel. Today we are going to be reviewing another piece of World War II reenacting equipment. This is a 60 millimeter shell, but it's not a real one. It's a reproduction made entirely from resin and it costs about half the price to a quarter of the price of a real one, which makes it very attractive to people that want to have a nice display for a living history event that they're attending without the cost of hundreds and hundreds of dollars to have the real thing. It comes from a company called the Fieldworks. And they make replica ordnance, grenades, mortars of varying different kinds, artillery shells, and even resin knives that look almost exactly like an actual knife except they're not sharpened and they will actually bend and flex you can see they have a Willie Pete version of the 60 millimeter they also do 81 millimeter mortar rounds you can buy the fuses separate so if you wanted different color fuses to sit out you could do that and they also have an eBay store with all of the same items for sale. Now eBay is actually where I got mine because I just like that eBay actually tells me exactly what it's going to cost to ship it when I buy it uh, rather than it having to be calculated at checkout and all that stuff. So this is just where I chose to get it from. It was $58 plus $8.50 shipping. Normally these rounds, if they're real, cost somewhere around $200. You might, might get lucky and find one for $125 or so. So that means this is substantially less money. So we're going to look at it. Now it actually unscrews into three components. You have your fuse here. You have your body here. And then you have your fins. The fuse is made from a hard resin. It has a plastic feel to it, but it has some serious weight to it. And that's kind of what's interesting about the material they're using while it is plastic it is quite dense it feels more like a fiber plastic like what a handgun frame would be made from like on a Glock that's kind of what it feels like so the fuse looks very good it does say PDF M52 FLJ which should be the correct markings for a World War II 60 fuse nice big threads this stuff holds paint really well because it is a plastic and not rubber. We all know rubber is kind of hard to paint. It's nice that this kind of has the weight of a solid chunk of rubber, but has the texture of plastic so that it will hold paint good. There are no other markings on the fuse. The body is the same material. It is solid on the inside except for where it's cut out for the threads for both the fins and the fuse. No markings at all anywhere, nice texture to it, good, good weight. I'd venture to say this thing probably weighs about what a real one would weigh, I just don't have a real one to weigh it next to to prove that. The Fieldworks logo is down inside the casing, which is nice because it's not visible on the outside, which doesn't detract from any realism. And then the fins are that same kind of dense fiber plastic in the center, but the outer edges, the fins themselves, are more like rubber, more flexible. So this is nice because it means they're not going to snap off. They have some flex to them. So they look the part, but they're more durable since they can bend a little bit. On the bottom, we have more markings, 1943... M32, WG-8-57. One thing I don't like is that one of the fins has the logo on it. And so does the area between the fins in one spot. So yeah, right here, they put their logo on the fin, the Fieldworks. They also stuck it down in between the fins, right here and again on the exact opposite side. And that didn't really make any sense to me because I'm sitting here thinking, well, you put your logo on the inside right here, 
right? So that it doesn't detract from the historical look of the thing, but then you put it on the outside on this piece. Seems like it would have made more sense to make it really tiny and put it right there where it would be covered, but whatever. Uh, I'm pretty sure Sandpaper will actually take that logo off, and I hate to do it to them because I know it's just there so that they can sell their product, but for my purposes, we can't be having it. So I'm going to take some very, very si fine sandpaper here, since this is all going to get painted anyway, and see if I can take that off right here for you guys to prove that it can be done. All right, so I paused the video and I've been away for about five minutes and I've actually got some bad news. All I did was make it more visible. I used very, very fine sandpaper, two different kinds. And all it did was change the color of the logo by making it lighter as the sandpaper hit it as opposed to the background and I sanded quite a bit and have made no progress. The material itself seems to not be sandable. Um, for whatever reason, nothing is coming off. There's no dust or powder anywhere. The sandpaper itself, this is one of the pieces I used. I bent it and pushed it down in there um, like this and you can see there's almost nothing on it. Just Actually, that's where the sandpaper, like the little pieces of the sand material is coming off. So it doesn't appear this material can actually be sanded. It's just slightly too rubbery. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe we can get that off with some chemicals. Maybe there's some kind of chemical that if I just rub across it, it'll kind of eat it off. Something we'll have to look at. <sighs> yeah, interesting. Anyway... We'll put it all back together for you and then let you have one last look at what it all looks like together up close maybe I'll get lucky and a couple coats of paint will cover that logo completely up it is down between the fins so it's not super noticeable unless you know where to look for it anyway so maybe it's not quite as big a deal as I'm making out of it but anyway Ultimately, I think this thing's pretty cool. Um, I think it has a nice weight to it. I don't know what the originals weigh. I'll actually weigh this thing for you so you can see what it weighs. With a little food scale here. We'll just weigh it in ounces. So this thing weighs 12.05 ounces, so it's just a little shy of a pound uh, there. So it just, I actually am surprised it only weighs that little. It, it just feels dense. It feels weighty and meaty and heavy when you hold it. I really would have expected it to actually exceed a pound. Holding it, I would think it would be about a pound and a half, so I'm really, really shocked by that. But ultimately, I think this is a great option as opposed to having to buy the real ones. And because they have some rubber fins or a flexible fin, like I said, it's not really rubber and a decent weight. If you have a mortar in your reenacting unit, you can actually drop these down the tube to show people how it would have been done and it's not gonna tear the thing up. You can tell this thing is very durable. So that's nice too. You know, someone's like, well, how did that work? You know, and you have the mortar tube there, you can show them how you would hang it and drop it and whatnot at no risk of damaging a real one. So ultimately, as always, the choice to purchase this thing is going to be yours. I'm just here to provide the information to help you make an educated decision on whether you will or won't. That's all I have for you guys. As always, like and subscribe and have a nice day.